trauma, addiction, depression, and anxiety, the things that can definitely hold you back from living your truth and leading a positive life. Today we are joined by the man who founded the Freedom Specialist program after years of battling his own demons. The program is a body-based approach to happiness, health, and well-being. Bob Gardner is the author of the book Built for Freedom and the host of the inspirational podcast Alive and Free. He joins us live this morning. Hi, Bob. Hi, how you doing? Good. Thanks for being here with us today. Okay, so Tell us a little bit more about the Freedom Specialist program. You say it's a body-based approach. What does that even mean? Yeah, a lot of the approaches that are uh, currently in use to handle trauma, to handle anxiety, depression, addiction, and stuff are very uh, talk-based approach. So we're using the mind to try and fix the mind. And I, it wasn't working for me as much as I spent so many years trying to figure it out for my own addictions, walking. I was wandering the streets of Seattle, actually, like wishing I would be hit by a bus. I was so suicidal. And so uh, when my wife was about to leave and everything was about to fall apart, I said, I've got to find another way out. So I went back to asking myself the question of what's actually happening. And when I got down to it, in a moment, when I was feeling anxiety, or I was feeling depressed, or I was feeling suicidal, or I was dealing with these addictive urges, the only thing I could say that I knew was happening was that, well, my body was tense, and my breathing was off, and my focus, and my eyes were darting left and right, and yeah, thoughts were running, but I was like, what if I start changing my body, what will happen to the mind? And it started retraining my mental responses because my body was no longer stuck in an agitated state. So from that awareness, I started building the program. Okay, so maybe talk a little bit more about that because it seems like everybody struggles with something, even if you don't immediately see it on the outside. So how do you pinpoint what it is that you may be struggling with and then free yourself of it? So yeah, I actually had a conversation yesterday with a guy who was talking about this realization that he deals with a lot of anxiety, he travels a lot for his job. He's like, I'm getting off the plane and I'm, I'm, I'm worried about the person behind me. I'm worried about taking too long and I have this little anxiety. And I told him, look, anxiety is a label that you're placing on an experience you're having. So if you look at the experience itself, what exactly are you feeling and where is it? You know, is your big toe feeling anxious? Is your elbow feeling anxious? Or do you feel it like in your gut? Or do you feel it in your face? Or do you feel it in your neck? So I have them identify what is the feeling? Is it tension? Is it, a, is it an agitation or a tingle or a, a sudden chemical flush? And then where is it? And then I just have them start to change those things. You don't have to breathe slow. You don't have to breathe fast. There's not a right way to do it. The first step is always acknowledge what's happening and then just start to move the dials. So breathing, tension, movement, relaxation. Like these are, these are all simple things to work with. Okay, so if you're watching this at home, maybe you're feeling inspired. Is that how you say people should start their journey? Yes, yes, absolutely. Um, the process, one of the processes I take people through is what I call emotional ninjutsu. And I would say A, B, L, E are four letters in that little process that'll make you able to handle all of it. A, acknowledge. B, start breathing differently. L, start loosening up the body from the places that it's stuck and tense and tight and jittery. And E, get into a position that feels free. And you'll find that even if the thoughts don't go all the way away, they start to diminish to where you can start to make active choices and consciously create a life that's useful instead of being reactive all the time. Okay, so you mentioned yourself, you've been through this, walking on the streets of Seattle. How did you free yourself of this addiction, this trauma? How long did it take to work for anybody at home who feels like, you know, they're hanging on by a thread? I, it's surprisingly quickly, but I, I it took me a little bit of uh, guts to get started because I was throwing out all of the common thought processes around addiction. Mm. I had to ask myself, what do I mean when I say I'm addicted, other than to say I'm not in control of my, hate, my behavior? What does that actually mean? And I looked deeply into the word addiction itself, into the ideas around addiction, to discover that it's always just been a theory that actually has been disproven a lot of times. It's been called a disease. But there has never in a laboratory in the United States been found a molecule of addiction. There have been a lot of different things that people have tried to pinpoint as the reason a person is addictive or not. But there's never actually been found any physical correlation. So I was like, well, if there isn't anything there, then what is addiction? It's I'm comfortable and I'm uncomfortable in a given moment. 
whether that's because I'm bored or tired or anything else. And because I'm uncomfortable, I want to do something that makes me feel more comfortable. And my brain has a, law, a short list of the things that work. And at the top were my addictive behaviors, so whether that was with drugs or food or pornography or alcohol or any of the other things that were on the top of the list. And so that was the short list. So I was like, well, okay, cool. Well, one, uh, that means I got to handle my body's discomfort, which means I have to be aware of it. And yeah. two, I got to start developing other things that feel equally as good. And so that was the process that I started with. And surprisingly, as I started handling the discomfort, there was mm -hmm. nothing left to cope with. So I didn't have coping mechanisms to, to retrain so much. So that was where I decided to put all of my time and effort. And it, it didn't take long for me to start feeling, I'm talking a couple weeks before okay. I started feeling free enough to be able to make conscious choices about how I wanted to start to change my life and not feel like I was a victim anymore and not have to continue to sp for the rest of my life to say I was an addict when I was a human being. I, I felt like I had more potential than to just hang on for the rest of life. Yeah, I mean, a couple weeks is just absolutely remarkable. Okay, so in our last 10 seconds, tell us about your book and where people can get it. You can go to uh, builtforfreedom.org. Uh, the name of the book is Built for Freedom. It's, it's a, a rollicking adventure through everything about stress, anxiety, and anything else, and what's really going on. And the main message is there's nothing wrong with you. If you're having these emotions, that means your body and brain work fine. You just got to train them different. All right, Bob Gardner, thanks so much for the inspiration on a Sunday morning. Thanks for being here with us today. My pleasure. All right, take care.